The story goes back to a home economics teacher at Hazard High School, Alice Faye Noble. In her travels, she saw a Challenger Learning Center, and she came back and said, we need to bring one of these things to Hazard. Well, of course, the Challenger Space Shuttle tragedy happened in January of 1986. It was NASA's educational mission uh, there had been thousands of teachers that had applied to make this shuttle trip into space to teach lessons. And of course, through that process, uh, Krista McAuliffe was selected. And so that day, school children from all over the world watching, and this tragedy played out on TV right in front of their eyes. The family members of those Challenger astronauts uh, immediately knew that they had to do something to turn that tragedy around. They got together, came up with this concept of Challenger Learning Centers, and the first one opened 18 months later in Houston. You would have to say that it was a long shot for us to be able to uh, pull off locating a a Challenger Center, a facility like this in a small rural area. Governor Paul Patton was uh, governor at the time and he helped to secure that as well. Uh, he provided some, some funding on the front end and helped to show that the state of Kentucky was behind a Challenger Center here. It's one of the programs that my administration supported of which I am most proud. Kentucky is fortunate to have a Challenger Learning Center for the benefit of our young people, and I'm proud that it's in Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, so actually I was one of the first groups ever um, to come to the Challenger Center. We came in and we're learning about space, we're learning about um, exploration, comets, and um, really it opens your eyes to the world beyond uh, where we live here on Earth. It's well known that here in Eastern Kentucky, the coal industry uh, is struggling. What you see in a lot of communities is a diversification of the economy now. What I've learned through Mr. Cravens and others here is that many of the same tools, they're not identical, um, but we're giving kids at a young age, you know, my son's 10, he's learning how to use robots that are used very similarly in coal mining uh, to be used uh, for NASA that we're going to use to dig for frozen water um, on Mars. If we can provide kids in a coal community um, with a way to where they can use those experiences uh, into um, space engineering, then, uh, you know, it's to infinity and beyond. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10,000 students annually that will participate in a program here at the Challenger Center. The, the key is getting them captured early, get, getting their interest early. But total, uh, you know, we're probably reaching close to 160,000 students now uh, over 20 years that have participated in Challenger programs. I've come here for many, many years, and this helped shape me into, the, into an engineering career. I knew that, and it wasn't until last summer that I actually knew I wanted to do space science. Between touring the Space Science Center at Moorhead and going to Destination Space, after all that, I knew the space science is what I wanted to do. A lot of other places don't have anywhere near as much, especially not a Challenger Center like this one. You know, our flagship program is our simulated space missions. You know, the way that works is a mock-up of mission control in Houston, a mock-up of a space station laboratory, and just like a NASA mission, uh, they have to work together as a team. They have to communicate between the Earth-based team and the space-based team. Uh, there's a lot of problem solving, uh, decision making, critical thinking goes into a mission in addition to the science and math that they're getting out of the experience. 
We have a wide variety of other programs. We have a 2,500 square foot interactive science center where we're housing a program called Mars Invasion 2030 from coal camp to space camp where we look at the way coal mining and space science are alike. This is the only place uh, in eastern Kentucky that you can come to and learn about space with this hands-on experience. It's going to provide us an opportunity for kids um, that, you know, maybe they don't have in Lexington. So that's a leg to stand on here, that here in rural eastern Kentucky, we have something that they don't have there. Students in eastern Kentucky, we know, are as bright and uh, as capable as students anywhere. With this role of inspiring and motivating students to pursue STEM careers. What it's doing is it is encouraging those entrepreneurs to start businesses, develop the skills in this area that we need to bring the jobs here. We already know that our students are going out there and becoming engineers and pilots. You know, for my son, he wants to be a pilot. Uh, he has a fascination with space, so who's to know uh, he might end up being the next space engineer that is developing rockets and developing aircraft to take us to worlds beyond what we know now. I mean, you know, it might not be something that I see, but if he sees it and he gets to see a world um, that is absolutely extraordinary, then, uh, then we're doing the right thing here in Eastern Kentucky.